Hello and welcome back. This is part two of the lecture on goals and objectives in the university teaching program. As we go on, most of the focus is going to be on objectives, but I think a misconception that can easily arise is that the objectives are the really important part and the goals don't matter so much. They're just a route to get to the objectives. That's false. I would argue that the thing that really matters is the goals. Those are what you want your students to learn or how you want them to develop as people. For you as an instructor, that's probably the part that really matters. The thing to recognize, though, is that we can't directly assess that. The objectives are an opportunity to think about the proxies that will help you assess whether your students have reached the goals that you have set. Let's keep our eyes on the prize and the purpose of all this. What we're trying to do is connect objectives to assessment. Since an objective is a description of something that you are going to get a student to do, they are direct statements of what you intend to assess. So the process of course planning when you're doing it with this method is to start with your goals, break them up into more detailed objectives, and since they are statements of things students will do, they will allow you to make a detailed assessment plan. So your objectives give you a checklist of what to assess, but you can actually go farther than that. As we'll see in the following lectures, we can also use our objectives for clues on how to assess. In other words, if we write our objectives carefully, they can help us decide which assessment tools are most suitable. One thing to be aware of is that there are already some goals and, to a lesser extent, objectives that are pre-written for you, and that's lists of graduate attributes. So here's an extract of CBU's institutional graduate attributes, and you may also be aware that the programs you teach in also have graduate attributes. I'm just going to do a bit of a preview of Lecture 2 and point out that Part of this is mostly things that we would say are in the cognitive or thinking domain, and part of this is mostly in the affective or emotional or social domain. But now going back to goals and objectives, you can pull goals straight out of the lists of graduate attributes, and many of us, as we're designing our courses, probably should be pulling goals straight out of the graduate attributes. So here's one about students becoming experienced communicators. Now, there isn't really a great objective here on the graduate attributes list, but it's pretty easy to construct them. Here's an objective. It's not the best objective I've ever seen, and you might think about how you could make it more specific for your courses. Similarly, here's a goal to do with students becoming culturally and ethically aware. And it's not hard to put together a perfectly good objective here, which might be an appropriate objective for many of you in your courses. So I do encourage you to look at the graduate attributes and think about how you can address them in your own courses.